was the most dickish way in which a friend showed you that you're not as close as you thought. Part 3. Kick back and enjoy the ride. If you dig what we do, hit that subscribe button and share the love for Thread Tonic. Account 1. I have had one friend from elementary to middle school and a friend I met in high school ditch me simply by ignoring me. I do have social anxiety, well, so I am told, and have trouble relating to people in most cases. The one from high school I used to see pretty often, go over his house for bonfires and so on. He had a rocky problem with his girlfriend, classic girlfriend runs off with best friend situation, and we would talk, watch old movies, and just go drive around aimlessly. He decided he was going to go to Germany a year ago for school, gave me a huge folder of past instant messages where we had talked for hours about random crap that he had saved, gave it to me. We talked over Skype a few times, saw him once or twice when he got back. Then he just stopped talking to me. Then he stopped responding to me. Now he is just another name on my Facebook list. No idea why he decided he was sick of me, but suffice it to say, it doesn't help that friends seem to get tired of me and ditch me after years of knowing each other. It makes me wonder what's wrong with me. Sometimes I wish people would at least tell me why they just fall off the face of the earth. It makes you paranoid in my experience, and I feel like I can't maintain relationships with people since they have a habit of just disappearing. And in retrospect, you feel like a fool for thinking they were a friend at all. Account 2 I was dating this guy once. At first, he was always really sweet, but the more comfortable with me he got, the more passive-aggressive he became. He started insulting me in a way that sounds like a compliment. I like your breasts better in a bra. Your ass is so hot, if you didn't have one, I'd hardly find you attractive. And he kept comparing me to his ex. Also, he always asked me to come to these car shows with him, but not once did he ever want to do something I really enjoyed. Clearly, we weren't made to be. So I broke up with him and I told him why. In his mind, he didn't do anything wrong and I must be grasping straws to come up with any old excuse to break up with him. This is when he decided to accuse a mutual friend of ours that we were screwing around. This is a retarded accusation. We were together constantly and the week before we broke up, I was just distraught from his latest string of insults and comparisons. I don't know when he thought I could have the time or the desire to seek out a third party. And imagine how mutual friend felt. This was literally out of the fucking blue. They were in work groups for school and all of a sudden his buddy just stops talking to him because of some baseless bro code violation accusation. It was in fact so bizarre that our mutual friends pretty much took one big WTF dude step away from him. Well, mutual friend didn't want to be friends with me anymore because he was afraid if we were seen hanging out, people would think the accusations were true. As you can imagine, this pissed me the fuck off. What does he have your house bugged? So I visited anyways. Played video games, watched movies, hung out with him, and his two boss roommates and all the mutual friends who drifted in and out. We've been dating for three years. I move into his house in a couple of weeks. Account 3. Most lately, it's my friend who always comes to cry on my shoulder. I always watch her son when the babysitter falls through or the dad is too lazy to put down the video games, etc. Has mentioned at least three times in my presence she's getting married. But I have yet to be invited, though I know the invitations have been sent out. I didn't even mention I wouldn't have known she was engaged if she hadn't brought up the topic of a wedding and her wedding dress getting screwed up. Needless to say, I'm busy for the next few years when she wants a babysitter again. Account 4. He fucked my girlfriend when she was passed out drunk in our house. So, I smashed his fucking face in. Also, he was charged with and convicted for rape. And yes, I kicked the shit out of him the next time I saw him after he got out. Also, to top it off, I showed up at both of his parents' workplaces and passed around documentation that their son was a convicted rapist. Account 5. My cousin and I were very close as young kids and still kept in touch as adults. An invitation came in the mail for my parents to her wedding, but I was not included. I spoke to my aunt, not her mother, about my disappointment in not being invited. My mother called her mother and asked if I had been invited. My aunt told her that they were keeping the wedding small and no cousins were being invited. I am her only cousin in the same state. My aunt, not her mother, calls and says that she can't attend because she lives too far away and financial reasons and recommends that I take her place. Still no invite. 
My parents come back from the wedding telling me that the table they sat at were four of his cousins and two of her cousins from the other side, not to mention their old neighbor from when we were ten who hasn't seen my cousin since she they moved, who said blood is thicker than water. Account six. God, this'll get buried. But I've never exactly ever been anyone's best friend. I've been variations of a runner-up in that department, but I did have a pretty mutual best friend until he got a girlfriend and she turned him against me, and things have never been the same since. Yeah, sounds like something straight out of fucking high school drama TV. I hate it as much as you. We'd been friends for all of middle school through high school, then senior year was when his girlfriend messed things up. She'd been a really good friend of mine, too, and we often talked. Then one time she decided that I wanted to take her from him, or some bullshit like that I really didn't, and told him. So one morning I'm giving him a ride to school, and he gets in the car and starts screaming at me, talking about how he knew that I told her name all this stuff and whatnot. I was flabbergasted. We'd been friends for five years, he'd been dating her for five months, and he trusted what she said over me without even wanting to hear my side of the story. Nice. The best part was after his rant, he said, I'm not trying to be a dick, I'm just saying. Obviously, I just sat there and ignored it all. Happy ending, though. A couple years later, our friendship's back in good shape. Water under the bridge, etc. Even though it's not exactly like before. On a different note, all my other friends I thought I had, I find slowly drifting away into their own lives, past memories being muddled in the midst of new paths taken. Nobody really cares as much as I do about all of it, nothing's really mutual, really depresses me sometimes. TLDR, don't ever tell anybody anything. If you do, you start missing everybody. Account 7. A guy I considered my best friend silently accepted that his girlfriend, my ex, was slandering me behind my back to my girlfriend. When I finally confronted her about it, admittedly pretty angry, they responded by telling me I wasn't welcome in their home anymore. And this was a guy I commuted with every day and spent a lot of time with at their place, playing with his children and so on. He cut all ties with everyone we both knew and told my girlfriend that she was the reason he couldn't see me and his other friends anymore. Any attempt to contact him to sort things out has been in vain. Then one day I found out my girlfriend had been fooling around with at least three other guys, two of them online, very intensely. I broke it off and told her that if the lies continued, she would have 20 minutes to pack all her stuff. Otherwise, I would let her find a new place before I kicked her out. To my surprise, they took her back in. The woman they just blame for everything is living with them right now until she finds a new place. My best friend won't even talk to me because of her, but apparently has no problem offering her shelter. And what's more, I have talked to my ex a couple of times and she even says she sometimes has to defend me when they talk about me. Fuck those people! Fuck them! Account 8. I have so many of these stories that I don't know where to begin. I guess I just have a poor personality. Here's an easy one. I called a friend of mine one night to see what he was up to. He said that everyone, about 12 people, were going to the movies. It started in 15 minutes, but I should meet them there. I bought my ticket and headed into the theater, which was packed. The house lights were still on and the previews hadn't started playing yet, so I called my friend but got no answer. Whatever, I'll sit in the back and try to call later. Five minutes pass and I try again, no answer. So, I'm looking in the crowd and I see someone using their cell phone as a flashlight, like they were trying to signal someone. I thought it was my friend, so I approached. It turns out that it was the person behind my group who was kind enough to signal me. I overheard my friends talking negatively about me when I got close. I didn't want to leave because, hell, movie tickets are expensive, so I sat down and watched the movie away from my friends. After the movie, they wouldn't even acknowledge me. That's what friends are for. Account 9. Living well is the best revenge. I have had what I considered friends let me know they found the thought of my company appalling. It hurts a lot. I have found it helps with the pain to turn that hurt and frustration into fuel to improve the life you do have. Hit the gym, start a business, learn a foreign language, or write the next great American novel. It's every person's duty to improve themselves. If others don't realize that you are of quality and capable of recognizable accomplishments, then perhaps in hindsight, you are better off without those people in your life. They may have, in future reflection, actually done you a favor. 
Account 10, one of the closest friends I have ever had, moved with me across four states, bringing his girlfriend. And we all got an apartment with my girlfriend. I thought my life was perfect with my best friend and my girl and being out and on our own. The guy took months to get a job, and I helped him out until then with a lower share of the rent, because only his girlfriend was working, even though I had rented a larger apartment than planned for them. As soon as he gets a job, they move out, unannounced, skipping out on their share of the rent. This was only the start of how he treated me poorly. I met this guy, Chris, my first year of college, and we were immediately really good friends. We were never really single at the same time, so there was never anything romantic between us. He meets this girl, Victoria, tells me about how much he likes her, and I finally convince him to ask her out he wasn't great with girls. He wasn't great with girls. They start dating, she and I are friends, everything's great. I go abroad the next semester and he pops the question to her. They have been dating for less than a year at this point, keep in mind. I'm happy for him, although a little bummed that he didn't tell me he was going to propose. We were best friends after all. The girl is all excited, wants me to be in the wedding party. Actually, they argued over whose side of the wedding I would be on, whether I'd be the best woe man or maid of honor. I come back, Chris and I go back to being best friends. I start noticing that Victoria is getting difficult about everything. Wedding plans, school, work. She worked a whole eight hours week. Her life was tough. Chris hanging out with me. Chris ignores it. Victoria and I were in a club together, both as officers. I was the president, she was secretary. One day, completely out of the blue, she emails me and says, I'm way too busy to do this club, I quit. Weird, but all right. Chris and I keep hanging out, but she starts calling him and complaining about random things while we hang out. Hanging out with Chris becomes less fun. I go home for winter break one semester, come back. Chris won't respond to any of my messages. Oh, and Victoria deletes and blocks me from Facebook. Whatever, right? Chris still won't respond to my messages. It's been four or five months since I've heard from him at this point. I delete him finally, but send him a really calm, polite message asking what happened to our friendship. His response? Blocks me. So I go on Twitter and write a vague tweet about how people should have lives outside of their significant other. Didn't say names or anything. A day or two later, I get a barrage of text messages from Chris saying how I've disrespected him and Victoria by slandering them all over the internet. He also said I would learn my lesson for thinking I could disrespect him with no consequences. Uh, what? I delete the tweet and try to talk to him, and he apologizes for freaking out, says we'll talk when he calms down. Been three months, haven't heard from him. My guess is that his psycho fiancé just got jealous and wouldn't let him hang out with me anymore, since she had done that with basically all of his friends in the past. We have one mutual friend left, his only friend at this point, and when she asks what happened with him and me, his only reply is, Well, it has nothing to do with Victoria, even though she probably thinks that. Well then, sorry. It's not as big of a deal as saving his life or something, but it was pretty recent and still kind of hurts. Thanks to anyone who read that. TLDR, don't stick your dick in crazy. Account 12. We had all been friends throughout high school, and I thought after leaving for college, we were still cool. We all still hung out since we all lived close by. Only one of the people in the group wasn't too close with me because of bad vibes between us. Well, we had always talked about going camping and come to find out the summer I heard everyone was too busy. Turned out to be that for some reason, I just wasn't invited to our camping trip. I told my friend that I was really hurt that I hadn't been invited, and he said that they didn't want me to bring my then douchey boyfriend. I understood. Now this year, I've been closer than ever with them and have an awesome boyfriend they all love, only to find that once again I wasn't invited. Lame! Account 13. Shit. I feel like this thread is the story of my life. I feel like I'm a nice guy, and I always try to be friendly and welcoming to whoever I meet. I never let myself get a bad first impression of people and try my best never to judge a person. I don't know what it is, though, but for some reason, people always just end up not liking me. Not to say that they dislike me, but are always at least indifferent. At first, I thought that maybe someone had just spread a nasty rumor or something around, but I have no idea.
Maybe it's just like how awkward people can't tell that they're awkward or whatever, but I just don't know what it is about me that turns people away. Forever alone. Sub. Account 14. I had a similar experience with a friend. We were close, but he started avoiding hanging out. Eventually, he was having a big party for his birthday. Sounds a little childish, but whatever. I was out of town, but made an effort to get back early so I could be there. When I tried to call him and figure out what the plan was, he talked in circles without actually mentioning it or inviting me anywhere. Finally, after some leading questions, he said once they headed out, he'd let me know. I didn't hear from him for the rest of the night. Two days later, I saw him at work and he went on and on about his night and hooking up with some chick, etc. I was pretty pissed, and it was the moment it really clicked that we weren't the friends I thought we were. Since then, I don't really ever try to hang out with him, and he doesn't ever really call me. We're amicable if we work together, but it's awkward as hell. Account 15. My friend openly made fun of a condition I used to have, still kinda do, but it's not as serious, where my head rapidly jerks backwards and forwards and in some cases knocked me out due to stress. He did it in front of our friends, and I was mortified. 